Hey, what's going on, YouTube? It's SW Boston here, bringing you another video today on Monday. I'm going to be going on a huge rant today in my vlog after a very disappointing finish to our season for the Boston Bruins on Saturday afternoon after we choked a playoff spot. So I'm going to get into a real big rant, throw out some possibilities for them for next season as our season is over, done with. We're just going to have to move on for next season. So let's get right into our video and right into the rant. Well, uh, Saturday afternoon, we come in tied with Detroit, one point up on Philadelphia for a final playoff spot. We win, and the Flyers lose, or Detroit loses, and we're in. We go out there, we get the first goal, David Pasternak on a great pass from Brad Marchand, comes in, roofs it home, one nothing into the first period intermission. And Detroit was down one nothing going into their intermission on the Rangers, who sat their entire team, basically. Second period comes. We're getting dominated from the end of the first period into the second period. Senators come out. They tie the game real quick. Chris Neal, 1-1. to And then they just keep adding to it. Carlson throws a puck down the middle. Zach Smith tips it in 2-1. And then Matt Wemple scores 3-1. And then... Mika Zibinijad scores to make a 4-1 in like a 10-minute span. They score four goals to put us down 4-1. to one. And we go down 4-1 into the second intermission, and Detroit ties it to make it 1-1 in their second intermission. We come out in the third period, and it's more of the same. Uh, like 10 minutes left to go, we get a power play. We pull our uh, backup goalie, Jonas Gustafsson, who I'll get into that more because that's really annoying to me. But uh, we pull him. And they score on an empty net, 5-1, and they add another one to make it 6-1. We lose 6-1 to the Senators, and Detroit ends up losing to the Rangers, which would have guaranteed us the third spot in the Atlantic, and we would have played the Tampa Bay Lightning in the first round. Um, it's just frustrating to watch a team that played so well for the year that weren't expected to even be in a position to compete for the playoffs, especially after trading the likes of Milan Lucic, Dougie Hamilton, We've gotten rid of so many players over the last couple seasons and just let the ones go, like Daniel Paye and Greg Campbell, who are great penalty kills, great role guys. Um, we let them go. We traded away Johnny, Johnny Boychuk, which I think was our biggest mistake over the last couple of years. And now we have a very young and experienced defense with an aging Daniel Chara, an aging Dennis Seidenberg, Kevin Miller, who is just god-awful. So we have basically only a couple few solid defensemen in there, and we have some young forwards and some good forwards, our core forwards, that are up there. We pick up Lee Stavniak, who looked really good during the whole season that he was with us. Uh, John Michael Lyles was a spot, good trade for us. I hope they bring those two players back. They look really hungry, but Brett Connolly hasn't done anything over the last two years. Jimmy Hayes didn't really do well this year. Frank Petrano didn't do well in his first call up his second call he looked really good ryan spooner has uh hot streaks and cold streaks for our team where he will do everything right with his line mates and then he just doesn't look like he wants to be there for a part of the time um patrice bergeron is doing as much as he can but he's not a real vocal guy he's more lead by example i'm gonna do what i do him martian and whoever's been on their wing it usually worked out really well david Krejci kind of goes through dry spells and hot spells louis erickson is kind of Probably our most consistent player besides Bergeron and Marchand. Um, but the biggest thing to me is that we have a goaltender who's supposed to be a franchise goaltender and one of the elite goaltenders in the league. And with the last game of the season, two two days after we previously played against Detroit in a 5-2 huge victory, two days away, he somehow gets sick enough to where he can't play. And it's, like, it's really like one day away. And I... I don't know how you get that sick one day away from the biggest game of the season. It's not the biggest game of his career because we went to the Stanley Cup Finals in 2013 with him, but it's it's just frustrating to see a goalie who gets sick. And then, I mean, there's a lot of people who would play through injuries and play through sickness, and he tried once early in the season. I commend him for that. But the biggest game of our season, you leave it to Jonas Gustafsson to come out and bail you and our team out and play well, especially when everybody, I don't know if he told his teammates the day before when he was sick that he might not be able to go or whatever, but if everyone was expecting you to come in there, expecting you to lead him out on the ice, and expecting you, guys, you to come out and make the big saves when needed, it's kind of a letdown when you come in, you come out in the warm-ups, and you're sitting on the sideline by the bench, 
and then you face like eight shots and you go in and you're not going to play. Um, it's, it's kind of a huge morale kick against you to have you come in and then be like, oh, I can't play today. I'm sick. It's the last game of the season. Like you need to, you should have at least given it a go in my opinion. But, um, it's a big choke by them. It's frustrating to see that happen two years in a row. Both the Senators, which the Senators were in the playoffs last year. This year, they weren't even close to the playoffs. But we just, down the stretch, we lost, I think, 10 of 12 or 9 of 12, something like that, to end the season. That's that's just something that can't happen. We were up 10 points. We actually were in first place, like, probably less than a month ago. We jumped over Tampa with a win over them, and then we jumped over Florida. And we had it, it was, everything was clicking, everything was working, we looked really good. And then it just kind of went downhill really quickly, like snowball downhill, and nobody could step up and stop it for this team. Just not enough goal scoring in the last two, three weeks of the season. One goal or two goals a game isn't going to win you a lot of games. Um, it's just annoying and frustrating to see that happen to a team that worked so hard to get up in the playoff structure. And then just kind of didn't give a good enough effort or didn't play well against bad teams. We lost twice to Carolina at home. Um, our third to last game of the season, we lost in a shootout. And in the shootout, nobody even took like a real good chance on net. Louis Erickson had the best one, but he lost the puck off his stick. And we lose in a shootout in five rounds to Carolina. We didn't score a single goal in five rounds of the shootout. So that's that's frustrating, to say the least. Um, for me, there's got to be changes for next season. If I'm the GM, if I'm Cam Neely and I'm looking at this team, there's got to be a shake-up. Zane O'Char is getting really old and really slow. I feel like he's got to go. Dennis Seidenberg, I thought, was pretty solid this year in the games that he did play. But he started off the season on the bench, um, recovering from injury, and he ended the season on the bench, recovering from injury. So... He was banged up this whole year. I don't know if you want him back next year or if he's just going to continue to get older and kind of decompose. Kevin Miller is a guy who's, to me, he's just a physical guy. He doesn't, he's not great in defensive positioning. He's not great getting the puck out. He's just a physical guy in front of the net, which is good to have. But if you're going to have somebody that you want to transition this team into a lot of skilled defensemen like John McAlyo is calling Colin Miller and Tori Krug are like the prototype forwards that we want for this team. I mean, prototype defensemen that we want for this team. You want puck-moving, quick defensemen that are going to jump into the play. And Tori Krug during the last game, even though they were down 4-1, was, was the only one that was jumping into the play and was the only one that wanted to get the puck in the offensive zone and create chances. So, I mean, those three defensemen, I think, stay. Adam McQuaid did a solid job this year. I didn't. I wasn't high on Adam McQuaid the last couple seasons, but he really improved this year. He had a crucial turnover in the last game, but uh, everybody has turnovers and everybody has bad games. I'm not going to blame the loss on him. The whole team didn't show up that game. Um, I feel like there's got to be some moves, whether it's just getting rid of those three players that I named. I feel like Erickson should be resigned. He was one of our best players, but... I feel like either Tuka Rask or somebody else from our core, definitely not Patrice Bergeron, definitely not Marchand. Maybe David Krejci, we need to move. And uh, I hate to say that because they've been on the team for so long and they've been a leader for this team and, and part of our core. But something's got to happen to get us back into the playoffs. It's We kind of went out for a half-hearted rebuild over from last season to this season, trading away a bunch of players, bringing in new guys, and it didn't really work out. So it's either... We do another half-hearted rebuild over the offseason, see how it goes, a patchwork rebuild, or we kind of completely start fresh, turn over a couple guys, bring in new leadership. And I feel like either Tuka Rask or David Krejci is going to suffer from this. Um, Patrice Bergeron, I feel like when we trade Zidane Shower or when Zidane Shower steps away, is our next captain. It's It's got to be Patrice Bergeron. But we get Chris Kelly back this season, hopefully, and hopefully he has the jump that he showed during the beginning of the season before he had that horrible injury. Um, I feel like Tuka Rask could be traded. We can get some cap off the books with Tuka Rask being traded for another solid goalie. We can see how Malcolm Subban kind of pans out. 
I know he had a really tough time in the NHL the first time he was in. But, you know, he's, he's had probably another year and a half to figure himself out and get better and improve. So he might be ready for another chance. Gustafson wasn't bad in the games that he played this year. Um, but the question I want to ask to anybody in the NHL or anybody who's a Bruins fan in general is, do you try this offseason before the draft and before the free agency period begins, do you try to make a huge move for a free agent pending? Because Tampa Bay has not re-signed Steven Santos. He's going to be the biggest guy in the market this offseason. So do you try to package deal? This is a package deal that I've thought of. And that I say, if it works cap number-wise and both teams would agree to it, I would do it in a heartbeat. If you trade David Krejci, the likes of David Krejci, like Ryan Spooner, maybe a couple younger assets, maybe a draft pick or two, and you get Steven Stamkos in return, but Steven Stamkos has to agree to sign an extension upon being traded. So we do not agree on the trade unless Steven Stamkos is going to sign an extension. So we trade away those players because Steven Stamkos in return. Do we do that deal? I feel 100% we do. Even though David Krejci is like a playoff guy, I feel Steven Stamkos brings uh, a new aspect to the team. He's great on the power play. He's probably, he's definitely a top three forward in the league for scoring. He's been better defensively. He's a natural centerman. So he fills that David Krejci spot. Plus, Ryan Spooner didn't really pan out as a third-line center. He played pretty well the last couple games on the wing, but I feel like he's really inconsistent. I don't. I wouldn't want to take the chance of putting him in the lineup night after night after night, um, especially when you're going to have, like, Steven Stamkos come in, a line of, like, Steven Stamkos, Louis Erickson, and then to be determined on the right wing, maybe, like, David Pasternak or someone like that on the right wing. That would be a solid... 1A, 1B line with Patrice Bergeron, Brad Marchand, and maybe at least Evan if we keep him, or somebody like a Frank Vitrano, or somebody on that side, or a Matt Bolesky. But that's what I want to see happen is like a big move for the Bruins. We need defensemen badly, but um, I really don't see where we can trade players to get defensemen without really harming our scoring. We're going to have to give up either young, unproven guys that could turn into a superstar, or we're going to have to try to pick up someone in free agency. But if we do get someone in free agency, I would like to see someone like a kind of veteran Michael Lyles type. Uh, he was really good for us. Great puck movement, really strong defensively. So we need more like him. I feel Colin Millen has got to get a better chance next season. He's very mobile great at passing, great decision maker, and he's got a bomb of a shot. So I feel like he, Tori Krug, John Michael Isles, Adam McQuaid are going to be the four guys, main guys going into next season. Um, we'll see how people tur- turn out. Zach Trotman, I didn't think, looked very good this season. Um, there's a lot of people that we could bring up. There's a lot of rookies that we could have developed. We, I don't know. I haven't looked into that. But that's my rant. That's what I would want to see happen for this team next year. I want to see them get back in the playoffs, have that fire like they did the past couple of years before they missed the playoffs last year. They need that leadership, that real vocal guy, and I really hope they get somebody, whether it's somebody who's a non-factor, like a Sean Thornton, who's just going to go out there, give you roll minutes, go hit people, bang people in the boards, get under people's skin, fight for what we have to fight for. Or if it's somebody like a Steven Stamkos who comes in, and provides a lift offensively and comes in and just scores 50 goals a year and is out there doing whatever he can to help his team win. He's not a real vocal guy either, neither is Patrice Bergeron. But we got to have a change, and I feel like something's got to give here. Either somebody big getting traded away or a big person moving in and helping us. Um, that's my take. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, hit that like button. Hit subscribe to stay up to date with all my videos. I'm back on Wednesday with another Rocket League video. We'll see how it goes, but signing off today. See you guys.